Hello, my name is Jin Young Ba. Here I present my paper, Speaker Sensitive Response Evaluation Model. There are four motivations for this research. First, human annotation is resource consuming. It requires money and evaluation time, and so it has low scalability. Second motivation is that responses of conversation can be various, but existing evaluation metrics take generate response and ground truth only. I will explain it with an example. In this conversation, person A said, what do you want to do tonight? And B responded, why don't we go see a movie? So from this conversation, the conversation model should generate appropriate responses such as, or hang out in the city. But A actually said, yeah, let's go to the theater. Then existing metrics such as blue takes the ground truth response and generate one and computes the similarity between them and blue gives zero scores because there are no intersected words between them. So this table shows context, ground truth, and the six candidates that are described in the previous slide. And I asked the appropriateness of candidates to people. The range of the score is one to five, because five means the most appropriate response for the context. And I sorted the candidates in descending order. And here I used blue and the embedding average to compute the similarity between the ground truth and the all candidates. But blue gives zero scores to appropriate candidates since there are no intersected words between the candidate and the ground truth, and they give high scores to non-appropriate responses. The other motivation is that there are existing metrics that consider the given conversation, such as ADM Uber, but they might give high scores to non-appropriate responses. Testing them on the same set of candidates we used before showed that they don't have a positive correlation with ground truth. Furthermore, it needs human labor to score to train the model. And the final motivation, and it is related, to, related with the idea of my model is difference of alternatives depends on the speakers. To support the hypothesis, I did a quantitative study with a large-scale conversation corpus. First, I categorized utterances into four categories. First one is speaker A's utterance in a conversation that named the same conversation. Second one is A's utterances in, a, in conversations with the same partner named same partner. Third one is all A's utterances that named the same speaker. And the final one is random utterances from speakers who are not A named random. And after that, I create utterance vectors by glob and compute the similarity of vectors by provenance norm. Then what is the conversation corpus to do experiment? So my answer for this question is Twitter conversation corpus. A Twitter conversation is defined as five or more tweets and at least two replies by each user. So the right one shows one example of a Twitter conversation corpus, and the status of the corpus is 27K users over 770K conversations. So this figure shows the result. X-axis is each category, and the Y-axis is the similarity between utterances in the category. And as you see, which is the same conversation, so it's the highest similarity, and then random shows the lowest one. And when we fix the conversation partner, the similarity of one speaker one speaker's utterances as P is higher than all of the speaker's utterances as S. So I can say that difference of utterances depends on the speakers. From these motivations and observations, I suggest a novel evaluation model named the Speaker Sense Response Evaluation Model, SSREM. The right figure shows the structure of the SSREM. And there are three inputs, context C, generate response R head, and ground truth R. Then SSRM measures the correlation between generated response and the context by runoff function f, and it measures the correlation between generated response and the ground truth by predefined function g, such as embedding average. Finally, SSRM blends the correlation from f and g functions by predefined function h. Then, how can we train the f function? So to do that, first, I define a set of candidates or terms for a context. The elements of the set are RA, which is ground truth response for the context, and four first utterances from SC, SP, S, S, and random categories. 
and I build a classification problem that identifies ground truth response RA from RCAN. To solve the problem, I make a classifier that uses the function f by defining the probability of RA given context C and RCAN as below. And now I need to maximize this probability by data set. So I use Twitter conversation corpus to train a function. And actually, this is one type of self-supervised learning. And unlike Ruber, SSRM has a positive correlation with human scores. Now I will explain the experiment. The goal of the first experiment is showing the correlation with the human scores. I annotated the appropriateness of 1,200 responses from Twitter conversations and movie scripts by using Amazon Mechanical Talk. And the bottom table shows the basic statistics of labeled responses. And I choose five metrics as baseline, blue, loose, embedding average, ruber, and RSREM. Actually, RSREM is the same as SSREM, except it uses all new random alternatives as the negative samples to train. And with RSREM, I can show the power of the speaker-sensitive examples, SC, SP, and SS. And I use Spearman and Pearson correlations between human scores and the model scores. So this table shows the result. Each number means correlation, and the p-values are shown in the bracket. First, blue, loose, embedding are not correlated with human scores. Luba shows a higher correlation with human scores than other baselines, but has a high p-value, that means low scalability. That is quite significant. RSREM performs better than Luber since Luber uses only one negative random sample. Finally, SSRM outperforms all other methods for two correlations with a low p value. I also draw scatter plots of human and model scores. X axis is the human score and Y axis is the model score. A dot is one response and a red line is a linear regression line. And I show the coefficient of the line. So in the slide, Blue and loose have many zero values, and the lines are flattened. And the line of embedding is also flattened. Luber is better than embedding, but the line is still flattened. RSRM is better than Luber, and the SSRM shows a higher positive correlation with human scores than other baselines. The goal of the second experiment is identifying true and false responses. So ground truth response is a true response, and the SC, SP, SS, and random are the first responses for a context. And I pick up Ruber and RSRM as baselines since they look at the correlation between context and the generated response. So here is the result. X-axis is each metric, and Y-axis is the score of the function. The error bar is 95 confidence interval of the values. All models perform well on distinguishing between ground truth alternatives and the random alternatives. But Luber performs poor on identifying SC, SP, and SS. Our SSRM outperforms the other two models for identifying all cases statistically significant. And the third experiment is showing applicability of SSRM. I use Twitter conversion corpus as training data and test the model on movie script. This is because the movie script is written by the script writers, whereas Twitter is personal, casual, online conversation. And, and I run two experiments that are the same as experiment number one and two with different test corpus. So this is the result of measuring correlation with human scores experiment. All baselines are not correlated with human scores, and especially Luba and RSRM are worse than blue loose embedding since they learn the different conversation corpus. But SSRM performs all other methods for two correlations with low p values. I also draw scatter plots of the human and model scores. Still, blue and loose have many zero values and the lines are flattened. And the lines of the embedding and loop are also flattened. But SSRA, which is right one, shows a higher positive correlation with human scores than other baselines. And this is the result of identifying true and false responses experiments. Luba and RSRM perform poor on distinguishing between ground truths and the false responses, but SSRM outperforms the other two models for identifying all cases statistically significant. And I show one example of conversation and generated responses with SSRM score. In the conversation, speakers said, morning Twitter, 
morning, how did you sleep? Then the ground truth of the conversation is, good, what about you? And the generated response <coughs> by one conversation model is, okay, but it wasn't long enough. Then it is appropriate response for the context. But unlike the root blue that gives zero scores, SSRM gives high score to this appropriate response. So in conclusion, I suggest a new evaluation metric for responses, SSRM, and show the positive correlation with human judgment. I also show the applicability of SSRM by testing on different, on the different corpus. 